There aren't many groups who are less popular in the UK than landlords. But is there a chance we'll miss them when they're gone? Well, we might get to find out. Each year since 2016, the number of properties owned by landlords has been falling. In this video, I'll explain why and whether the nation should be celebrating or if actually it might not be such good news after all. So why are landlords leaving? A national media piece that I was quoted in came up with four reasons. Well, firstly, it's no surprise that 2016 was the year that that number first turned negative, because that was the year that tax changes came in that meant that landlords could no longer recognise their mortgage interest as an expense, which pushed up their tax bills and in some cases meant that they were paying tax rates of above 100%. You can see that increase on this chart. But then you can see another increase in 2021. So where's that one come from? Well, partly it'll be down to rumours about a change to legislation that'll make it harder for landlords to evict tenants who are not paying or causing trouble. Those rumours were confirmed earlier this year and you can watch our video about that one. We'll link to it down below. It'll also partly be due to changes in energy performance rules which would stick landlords with big bills to upgrade their properties to meet new minimum standards. We've got a video on that one too, which we'll also link to below. And now, of course, we've also seen mortgage rates spike, which is going to reduce profitability for landlords, even if they increase rent to compensate. And all those possible reasons are valid. But there's another one, which is just landlords are old. These landlords have had a good run. Things are getting harder. They're getting older. You can get 5% on cash in the bank now why not get out and take profits? And the result of that is that we have the same number of rental properties as we had in 2015. And amazingly, the population is now two and a half million higher than it was in 2015. But so what? Landlords tend not to bulldoze their homes when they sell. They can only sell to another landlord or to someone who otherwise would have been renting. So does it actually make any difference? Well, I think you could argue that it actually benefits one group and disadvantages another. And before I explain who those groups are, just a quick reminder that if you don't already subscribe to our free weekly newsletter, Property Pulse, you can sign up for that using the link in the description below. So who is this good news for? Well, I think it's probably good news for first time buyers because if landlords are selling, that's freeing up properties that they can buy. And if not so many landlords are in the market looking to acquire new properties, then that means all else being equal, there's gonna be less demand for any given property, which should mean that the price is lower. So for anyone who doesn't currently own, but is in a position to own, probably good news. But for renters, the news isn't so good. Why is that though? It feels like it should be neutral because like I said, they could only sell to another landlord or to someone who will be coming out of a rental property in order to buy it. But there are two non-obvious reasons why it's bad news. The first is that rental properties tend to be more densely occupied. According to the English Housing Survey, 39% of owner-occupied homes have got two or more spare bedrooms compared to only 15% in the private rented sector and 10% in the social rented sector. So when there's a shift in the proportions of owned and rented properties, you could end up with actually more homes being needed, even if the number of people hasn't changed. In reality, it's a bit more complicated than that, but it kind of matches up with the fact that the most common property for first time buyers to buy is a three bedroom house. And you'll often get a couple moving out of a one bedroom flat into that. So they've got more room to grow into. And there's another non-obvious reason why this might not be good news for renters, which is when there's less demand for properties, fewer properties get built. Take the major house builders. They don't just build as many as they possibly can. When the market is slow, they slow down, so they're not flooding the market, and the price that they can achieve for each property stays as constant as possible. So with demand falling recently, Bellway has announced layoffs and Barrett Development has warned that they're gonna build 20% fewer homes this year. Clearly this isn't only or even mainly to do with landlords. Demand has fallen across the board because of mortgage rates spiking. But remember, there are the same number of rental properties today as there were eight years ago, despite the population being two and a half million higher. And less construction means even less new supply, which along with demand rising, means that rents are probably just gonna keep growing higher. The ideal outcome will probably be for institutional investors to come into the market, building properties specifically for rent, which will increase rental supply without affecting owner occupiers. And this is happening, but to nowhere near the extent needed to make a dent in rental demand. But will a new generation of individual landlords be tempted back in once some of the current threats have passed? Well, Maybe, but when you run the numbers, there's another investment that seems to offer higher returns with a heck of a lot less work. So watch this video next to find out what that is and whether property really is all over as an investment.